When you download your bank statement file into Excel, it will normally be in a rather ugly looking CSV file format. Now, this can be rather off-putting and you may decide not to make the most of the downloaded file because it looks unformatted and complicated. Well, this video will show you how to transform that ugly bank CSV file into a far more pleasing, useful and informative Excel report. Let's go and take a look. Open up your bank statement CSV file, or indeed, copy the one on screen. Now, my file has six columns and 15 rows. Your file may well have more than this, but the principles I'm going to demonstrate will remain the same. So, firstly, highlight the entire download data range, and using the cut and paste routine, move the highlighted range to cell L1. Now, adjust the column widths from column L until the end of your data range so that you can easily see the contents of each column. Now that we have moved the CSV download data out of the way, we can now create our own data table by selecting only the data we want. Navigate back to cell A1 and type in date. And in cell B1, type in description and in cell C1, type in value. Adjust the column widths so that you have plenty of room. Now, our CSV download file has 14 rows of data, and we want to copy only part of it into our own data table. We only want the date, the description, and the value of each transaction. So, navigate to cell A2 and enter in the formula plus L2, and press return. This retrieves the contents of L2 and places them in A2. Do exactly the same for B2 and copy into B2 the contents of M2. We now want the value of the transaction in cell C2. However, we want receipts to show as positive numbers and we want payments to show as negative numbers. We also want these receipts and payments to be in column C only, so we don't want one column for receipts and one column for payments. If we select cell C2 and enter in the formula plus O2 minus P2, that's the receipts for the row of 1325 less the payments for that row of 0. Now, by entering the plus amount first, and then deducting the minus amount, C2 will correctly show receipts as positives and payments as negatives. OK, so we now have the formulas in cells A2, B2 and C2. So highlight this range and drag and copy the contents down to the last row of your CSV download data range. In our case, this is down to row 15. Great. We have now selected the data components we need from the CSV download data range. So let's move this data range out of the way. Simply select column K and using the insert column tool, add enough lines such that the CSV download data range moves out of sight to the right of the spreadsheet. Finally, in this section, we're going to change one or two of the descriptions, such that the contents are more meaningful to us. Select cell B4, and we find that this is actually a payment to one of our suppliers' widget supplies. So, simply overtype the contents of B4 with our own description. Now, you can do this for any other items that require more clarification. Now, Navigate to cell C16 at the end of your value column and double click the sum command on the home ribbon. This gives us a total of all of our receipts and payments, which we can use to check our final totals later on. In the next section, we will create a listing of our analysis types and use this list to analyse our data.
Now that we have collected our basic transaction data from the CSV download file, we can now analyse these transactions. Firstly, select cell D1 and type in Analysis. Navigate across the spreadsheet to cell P1 and type in Analysis List. Navigate one down to cell P2 and type in 1 followed by Sales. Navigate down to P3 and type in 2 followed by Materials. P4 becomes 3 followed by Delivery Costs. P5 it's 4 followed by Stationary Costs. In P6 it's 5 followed by Internet. In P7 it's 6 followed by admin charges. In P8 it's 7 followed by bank charges. And finally in P9 it's 8 followed by other costs. Now of course these descriptions may not be suitable for your needs. So you can easily substitute your descriptions from the ones above. Navigate to cell D2. We want a drop-down box in this cell, which will allow us to select from any of the eight descriptions we've just created. One simple way of doing this is to use the data validation tool. So with cell D2 selected, navigate to the data ribbon, and from this ribbon, select the data validation tool. And from the allow field, select list. Now place your cursor in the source field and click on cell P2 and without unclicking drag down to the last item on the list and then press return. Your cursor will now go back to cell D2 and a small downwards pointing arrow will appear to the right of the cell. Click this and you will be presented with a list of all the items in your analysis list. Now that we have our analysis drop-down box in cell D2, we can copy this all the way down to the bottom of our list. Simply select the blank D2 cell and drag it down to the last row in our transaction data table. Now, all the rows in column D have an analysis drop-down box for you to choose an analysis type from. So let's quickly populate cells D2 down to D15 such that all of our transaction lines are correctly analysed. Using a data validation drop-down box ensures that you only get valid data in your data transaction table. Now, adjust any of the column widths in your table such that the contents are now fully visible. We can now move on to the final section, where we will create a simple pivot table to collect the values for each of our analysis types. Highlight your data transaction range, excluding the total value at the end of column C. Navigate to the Insert ribbon and select Pivot Table. The Create Pivot Table dialog box will now open. Now the table range is OK, so navigate to the Existing Worksheet Radio button and check it. Now with your cursor in the Location field, type in F5 and press Enter. The Pivot Table infographic will now appear in F5 onwards, and the Pivot Table Fields selector will appear to the right of your worksheet. In this Pivot Table Fields section, tick firstly the box that says Analysis, and then tick the box that says Value. Your completed Pivot Table will now appear in cells F5 onwards. Now close the Pivot Table Field Selector by clicking the Pivot Table Fields Close button. Finally, 
Let's tidy up our worksheet, format the cells correctly, add a few titles and check our work for arithmetic accuracy. Select cell F5 and change the row labels to read Analysis. Select G5 and change the label to read Totals and align this to the right. Select F4 and change the label to read Income and Expenditure. Select the range G6 through to G13 and from the Format tool select Numbers. Set this to two decimal places with the 1000 comma separator checked and negatives to show in red, preceded by a minus sign. Similarly, highlight column C and, using the Format tool again, select Number, two decimal places and the 1000 comma separator checked and negatives to show in red, preceded by a minus sign. Now select row 1 and make this bold and then click the Insert tool to add in a new blank row at the top of the sheet. From the Page Layout ribbon, uncheck the View Grid Lines box and finally adjust any column width that needs it and ensure that the value in cell C16 equals the value in G5 in the pivot table. Now, that looks a lot tidier and far more informative than our original CSV bank statement download file. We hope you enjoyed our spreadsheet video and that there was lots of content that you found both useful and informative. Now, if you would like us to send you a copy of this spreadsheet, then please subscribe to our channel and leave a comment below together with a big thumbs up. Alternatively, visit one of our channels on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. Now, if you're looking to use Excel to keep your accounting records, then please watch our video on how to create your own simple accounting spreadsheet. Alternatively, why not take a look at our more comprehensive accounting spreadsheet product, which, with over 6,000 downloads, is an easy to use and inexpensive way to keep your bookkeeping records. Thank you once again for watching and, oh yes, please do subscribe to our channel.